Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And another episode here on Elmont, Missouri. So we are here down at Field. We'll show you on the map instead of me just trying to guess the number. Field 32 and 31. And like I promised, we are getting some trees pushed. Exciting stuff. I know it. Found this dozer though. And I was like, oh, we gotta, we gotta try it. You can actually knock the trees down. Looks like kind of to my chagrin because it's uh, really struggling. Well, some of them get knocked down. Some of them don't want to get knocked down. They like to push. They'll push back at you. There we go. What about you? You want to get pushed over? It doesn't take the uh, stumps out though. So that makes things a little bit harder. I'm trying to just push these trees out of the way. So we will have to come back in here and get these stumps ground down. Don't know how we'll do that yet, or if I'm, I'm probably just going to take a chainsaw to them, to be honest. Do it that way. But, yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I like to do this kind of stuff that's slightly different. We're just renting this dozer. We did not go out and buy a... What, I don't even remember what the cost of this was. Nearly 200000 So, no, we did not do that. <laughs> that would have been... Not a wise purchase for us, I don't think, at this point. But it might be in the future, if we're going to start doing this more often. Just kind of put them over here in these piles. Try not to hit any stumps. Oh, yeah, we hit one. Alright, let's see. Get this one out of the way. Yeah, this is pretty this is pretty sweet. Pretty cool. It makes some quick work of it. But uses the uh kind of the thing that uh BC Beeler made for his uh excavators that you can push down trees and stuff with. But he put it on a dozer and it's awesome. Because that's kind of the way... I mean, you do see it. You certainly do see it with, done with excavators. That's probably the most common way, but... I've also seen trees getting taken out by dozers, too. You just push them down. That's getting a little rough right there, though. We might have to come in... Get those ones out of the ditch. Ooh, I can even use... Oh my, I can even use my joystick. That is pretty sweet. Kaboom. Uh oh, we got a branch on us. See if we can get that knocked off. It's kind of difficult, because you... Can't see where the stumps are. And those things will really screw you up. Yeah, get get on out of there. Get on out of there. There we go. Very nice. So yeah, we're gonna keep working this tree line. Just started at the front here. We gotta we have a few trees back here. So once we kinda get this cleared out a bit. I'll catch up with you guys again. It is March 1, if you haven't seen. <laughs> this is kind of our day that we're going to kind of do all this work because we're going to need to start getting into some tillage. I think we're good. I think everything else that's here just needs to be chopped down with a saw. We'll get like a flatbed or something, or we're just going to set fire to it, honestly, because we have this one still. We're just adding to it, and then we have that stupid pile in the back over here that we'll eventually get to as well, so 
we'll figure out if it's going to be worth putting time into loading them up and bringing them up to the like wood cell point or not I'm not thinking it's going to be I'd rather probably just get them gone set them on fire do it the easy way let's see how this one goes Ooh, just like that they're out of there probably gonna have to arrange for the company that we leased this from to come back and bring their low boy with them because we need to actually move this back to what was I thinking I was thinking maybe we would knock down this tree line of this field possibly while we have the dozer because we did purchase this field if you can see we only have $19,000 left um what else, what other tree line was I thinking is I thinking another one no I don't think so that's the plan so we'll catch you guys here shortly when we're getting this uh this big puppy moved or moved over there so i got a hold of the neighbors got a hold of the local authorities asked what are the rules for moving a machine like this down the roads and it's pretty frowned upon <laughs> to take this this kind of thing down public roads so yeah i got a i got a hold of the neighbors that own uh, this field here um, asked if we could utilize their lane and wrap around the back of their field they have a bit of a verge uh, down the back of their field so we are just slowly running the old dozer as I just didn't want to pay the money to rent a low boy rent a or yeah rent a semi to haul the low boy and haul the dozer just down the road a few miles so we're just gonna do what we can to get it back there not sure that we are gonna take out this actual tree line so this is where we're going we're taking this lane back uh we can actually cut through this these woods a bit and then we'll just kind of take it down to the back of this field and this is where we're gonna take out that tree line that's on that waterway the waterway we will leave uh, just because it's good for drainage for the field but we just want to take those trees out because then we can still I mean, we can drive the harvester over the waterway and like the planter and stuff so we don't have to round that waterway um, we can just lift over it and stuff so just make it easier to navigate that field Maybe eventually we'll put in like a drainage tile or something there so we can actually take the waterway out. I don't know. But that's down the road a bit. So for now, we're just having a bit of a, a ride here <laughs> At, in, on the morning of March 1. The next plan after we are done having our fun in the dozer, we're going to uh, take the... Massey down here with the brush hog and we'll start brush hogging that uh, tree line make sure we're clearing out anything that we need to clear out uh, kind of clean it up a bit before we take the plow and merge those fields and then uh, yeah then we'll oh and then we gotta bring the uh, fuel cans down and set ourselves some fires because I don't think we're gonna mess with Trying to load all those trees up for branches and limbs and stuff and uh, trying to sell them. I mean, it would probably be decent money, but I don't think we're going to mess with it, to be honest. So this guy, he did say that we should be able to sneak our way back through here. Looking like we are going to be able to. Might take a few branches out in the, in the meantime, but should be okay to do so. And then we'll just follow the train track down around the back of the field and avoid any of the main roads so we don't get in trouble with the law enforcement. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Alrighty, so we are over here at the field. Just gonna start going. 
I'm not sure if I'm gonna knock that big tree down yet. It might be a little bit challenging. Let's see if we can push that one over. It's always so hard to see with all these bushes. Oh boy. Something doesn't want to move. Yikes. Not, it's not always pretty. Getting hung up on something. Oh boy. I don't like that. Let's see what it is. It's a big old <laughs> rebranch. I'm not sure. Might have to cut that with a chainsaw. Luckily we have our chainsaw with us. Get that puppy out of there. See if we can get out now. Apparently we have our leaf blower with us too. There we go. All good. Yeah, it's a... It's not as pretty as I was hoping it would look. Kinda weird that it doesn't take the root there, the stumps out. This only takes the tree itself. Oh, well, there we had a big kaboom. Why does this thing want to just sit there? There we go. Just had to use a little engine power to get her off. Boom. They all come tumbling down. Push this guy into the open. Try and get everything in the open onto the field. We'll start that fire. I know it's not very good for our compaction of this field, but it is what it is. Here we go. One last tree here. Just like that. I'm going to get these all cleaned up now, put into a big old pile. And then, uh, I think I'm going to have to decide on if we want to knock that, try and knock that big tree over. It's right there on the corner. I feel like ideally, while we have the dozer to do it, might be a good idea, but I'm going to have to see. My plan is when we get the brush hog out here. We're going to remove all these stumps, too, before we brush hog it. We can get through here without hitting a stump. Yes, sir. So this is kind of what we did in the last field, too. Just kind of created a big old or a pile in the field. And uh, we'll just set a fire to it. We are just tearing up this field. <laughs> Look at all these crawler tracks all over the place. We're just absolutely tearing this up. Yikes. I think we're going to knock this puppy down. I think we're going to do it. If we can get into position or we can really get to get a good push on it. Come on down. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Well, that's the last thing you want is that big old tree to come falling down on top of the dozer. Can we get it off us is the next question. There we go. Good thing uh, this machine is pretty heavy duty. If we can push it. Well, she's pushing, but she's pushing hard. Come on now. Get on over there. That is looking ready to be set ablaze. I think that's going to be all she wrote for a clear or for a tree clearing. This did cost us seven and a half grand a lease. Was it worth it? I don't know. However, I am very tempted to combine this tree line 
that we don't have this small field back here anymore. And honestly, we might just do it again while we have the dozer. So we combine the alfalfa field in this backfield so we don't have to drive through this alfalfa field anymore to get to the backfield. Ooh. Now that is tempting. And I think while we have the dozer, we might just do it. Decision has been made. We'll get these trees knocked down. Might as well while we have it, right? Oh, you're going to fall on top of me again? Oh, back up. Okay. These are some bigger trees. This is going to be a little bit of a bigger job to get this tree line cleared. There's no small tree line. We're kind of just taking out a whole section of the woods, it kind of feels like. There we go. But they're coming down. This thing is got some mighty power under it probably should be starting up a little bit higher to try and push these down and at the base get these try to try and get these out here into this field instead of the alfalfa field we don't really want to be setting a fire in an alfalfa field that could be uh disastrous disastrous so probably it'd be a little bit better to just get these pushed out into plowed field because <laughs> less things to set on fire all right so we just only have a few more trees left to get cut down pushed down however you want to say it i'm getting pretty good at this i'm gonna say that and then probably like as soon as I turn the camera on, something's going to go crazy. Like right now. <laughs> I've been getting really good at like just driving over the stumps, pushing it down and then getting our tracks between the stump and pushing them. Nice full trees. Getting her pushed right on over to this big old pile. It's a big old pile of trees. Just like that. Eh. Lots of stumps that we got to come through and make sure that we're getting or else we are going to do some real deal damage to the alfalfa. But I think that's going to be it. If there was any, if there's any stragglers that we really need to cut down, we can always cut them down with the chainsaw. But so yeah, we put some time onto this puppy. I was really hoping to get it with un under, under an hour so we don't have to pay <laughs> the rental fee again. So that I think we're going to be able to do that. We're just gonna bring her back up to the farm get her parked up and uh, the company we rented this from should be back to grab it tomorrow we should be good so yeah that was actually really really fun <laughs> I quite enjoyed that so I think the next time that I'll see you guys is tomorrow or maybe even later this afternoon we'll head down get some brush hogging going and we'll get some fires started all at the same time, probably. And, uh, yeah, that'll be kind of fun. Alrighty, so we are up here at the field that we are going to combine. This tree line. Trying to find every little stump that we can. So we don't wreck our brush hog. And or tractor at the same time. Anything over here? think anything right here I don't remember there being any trees right here I did get rid of a few already while we were dozing if they were really an issue maybe we'll walk back to the tractor get some brush hogging done all right in the tractor Let's see how this goes Really just need to mow down these uh, bushes. That's really the big thing. Probably all the grass, really. The less the grass in the, in the ground, probably the better. Get something. Oh, see? There's something right there. 
little leftover pieces of things you find once you start actually getting these bushes going. This job probably would be a lot more pleasant with a cab detractor. I'm excited to combine these two fields though. We're gonna, we might, well, not might, we are gonna need some new bins. <laughs> we're definitely gonna need some new bins. I'm also excited that we're combining the, uh, the small alfalfa field into that, uh, other bigger one. That's gonna be really nice as well. It's gonna give us a lot of extra crop ground. And I'm thinking that the right side of the new field, so up, let's see, up here. I think we might just leave this section into, or in, uh, grass. Especially since we're getting rid of the alfalfa. We definitely are going to need some extra feed. I don't know, maybe we won't though. Because now that we have those pastures that have animal grazing, they really don't eat that much. But, again, hopefully, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that we can continue to expand the herd. So honestly, I'm tempted to put that front part of the yard into pasture again. Ooh, boy. We almost hit something. There's a lot right here. That could have been bad. There's one right here too in there. Yup. Could have been real bad. Because we're going to need somewhere to put these steers. Because, I mean, we have 15 steers. I don't think that realistically <laughs> you'd keep 15 steers in that small uh, calf shed. So I'm thinking putting another pasture out again in the front of the yard there. Where we just mowed last year. It would be nice. It would be easy. Well, it won't be easy because Bobby and I are going to have to put up a whole fence. Which is not always the most fun job in the world. I'm sure any cattle farmers out there can attest to that. The guys that have to mess with fencing all the time. I think that's kind of what we're thinking. Well, he's close term. Cattle wise, get uh, gotta get something going for those uh, steers. That are is the bushes hogged. You know what I mean? You get this? That's just a tree. What? Is, what are you? What are you thing? Are you gonna go away when we uh? Plow? I hope so. I had to put my leaf blower away, apparently. Keep taking that thing with me all the time. Now that that's done, we can run through here with the chisel plow, combine those fields. Yeah, we're gonna move back down to... kinda closer to the farm and get that part bush hogged as well. So, we'll catch you over there. How different does this look, huh? <laughs> looks so much more open. It's crazy. We're back here with our jerry can. Oh, apparently we can pick up our whole truck. Quit. Would you quit? I think how this works is you just set the old jerry can right inside. Yeah. Do something like this. And then just it just burns. I think that's how it works. Easy peasy. Kind of cool. Setting fires. It never shows up. The fire doesn't ever actually show up for me though. I don't know if anybody else has that problem with this, or if anybody's ever really even used this. But the, it just like shows up as like smoke. I think there's supposed to be fire that shows up. Where's my can at? So we're gonna go around 
setting some fires tonight, and then probably March 2, we'll get some uh, plowing done. Start getting some cultivating going. Heck, maybe we'll even hook the old 84 up to the cultivator and run some run the cultivator over some chisel plow or some plowed ground or something like that. I don't know. We'll have to see. So I'm taking a little, little bit to burn in that. It'll get there though. Just gotta be patient. Morning guys. Welcome to March 2. Uh, we're getting a lot of equipment out of the shed again. It's starting to warm up and it's kind of starting to be that time, but just mess around with this rock rake a bit. I thought it would like wind row the rocks. But it just kind of deletes the rocks. Which is interesting. So. I don't know. I guess. But. We're going to get this out. There was just a few rocks in this field that we kind of wanted to get rid of. This is going to be Bobby's job today. In the morning at least. He's uh. We're going to have him go down to. Eight. Get those rocks picked. I know there's a lot of rocks in 26 and 27 as well. So, he will be on that job at some point here. I don't know if you spotted it. But, we did purchase ourselves a New Holland disc vine. We are moving into the new new ages now with uh, this New Holland. Uh, definitely not brand new. It wasn't on the used market, so we did buy it at full price. Oh, 14 grand, I think, is what we bought that disc vine for. And it is hooked up to the 81. The 81 does not have its duels on anymore either. Um, and the MX is hooked up to our new 12 row Kinsey 3600 planner. So it's got the extended boxes on there. It's got the row cleaners. Can do some. It would do a nice job in a, a no-till situation if we need it to. And spending some money. Uh, we did have to take out a loan for the planter. I think I jumped the gun a little bit. I'm paying off that loan. That's okay. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. We're going to take the old, the big beast down, and we're going to start doing some merging of fields. So that's kind of our plan this morning. There we, go. Uh, we did get new discs on the front of this... Uh, Chisel plow here as well as replace the shoes. So brand new discs, brand new shoes. Ready to go for some tillage. Looking forward to running this girl. It's been a long winter. Excited to get back out in the field. We are just going to start back here this morning. Might as well start close. We'll head down to the uh, other field and get the, that field merged. I think that's the third time that we've merged that farther field down there, isn't it? Really just making that field big, I guess. I think it's, that will probably be the last time we do merge that field. It just makes sense, you know? I feel like... I just feel like it makes sense. At least with that field. This one, I also feel like it does because now we don't have to just drive through this alfalfa field. I don't know. So we are going to be chisel plowing this field, or this alfalfa in as well. But I kind of want to just get this merged a bit first yeah not not definitely not ideal uh chisel plowing through some gravel there but <laughs> we'll see probably gonna do do a little bit of damage to the old the old chisel but i think we're doing the right thing i think it's just gonna help our operation moving forward again once we get bigger equipment it's gonna be good for the operation so just going to be way easier to handle but we are going to get some grass mode as well today hopefully time uh allowing we will but i'm kind of hoping that we can kind of get a nice big mowing cut on uh this grass quick i know it's probably not going to be the best but i guess i i mean i feel like we might as well do it and then we'll just run the chisel or the cultivator through it right away should have time to plant over it as well, so I don't know. I'm thinking we're probably going to be doing uh, corn back there, which also means that we are definitely going to need a bin. <laughs> Another bin. 
Definitely. It's starting to get to the point where I wouldn't mind just buying a... We're starting to look into kind of building a, a, a grain leg site. Just building a whole thing, you know? I mean, yeah, because especially since we're going to have to buy another bin. It just would be really nice. And we can just use these bins as our, like, grain crop storage. Or wheat or rye. We won't have to sell those off early anymore. We got a nice grain leg, we can just... With a dryer, we can mainly just focus on storing our corn there. Maybe a little bit of beans, but... I think that would be really, really nice. Definitely something that I would... I kind of want to look into. Something I would probably be willing to take a loan out for as well. If we don't do it this year, we'll 100% be doing it next year, I think. And, and, then, and then it's like, well, if we have a green leg... With a pit and all that stuff, it's like... Could maybe start looking into upgrading and some uh, maybe some trucks, some some semi trucks with some upper bottoms or at least something, you know, or maybe even just some straight trucks. Because I mean, we've pretty much the main reason why we stuck with wagons is because they're just so much easier to load into augers than like trucks are. Especially since we don't have a swing like a swing away auger. I mean, yeah, I don't know. You really can't run a truck with auger without a swing away auger. I guess there's that like drive over soaring eagle thing that we could look into. But I'm tempted, I'm very tempted to start looking into green legs and stuff like that. So we'll see. I mean, we did just buy this big old field here. We got a lot of room that we could uh, maybe turn into a, a bin site. Just thinking out loud, but definitely something to keep an eye on if you guys are tuning into every episode. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments. Should we start looking into that kind of thing? Do we think it's too early still to be looking into that? We really are only probably, what, a quarter, a quarter through the challenge. We got a ways to go. Oh, I think it'd be worth it. Definitely, definitely looking forward to seeing what you guys are thinking. I highly, I highly encourage you to throw some feedback in at me. Just nearing completion of this job now. Job number one is done. Nearly. Nearly done. We've got this little sliver left to do. So, we're making good time today. I think I should have these fields merged and all that junk uh, by, I don't know, what, 1 o'clock, 30, 2 o'clock, not too bad, and then we'll probably start getting mowing, if, uh, because Bobby, he's going to be at it all day, <laughs> likely, with that rake, going to be a job, and he's got a lot of fields to do, so... I think the mowing is going to be up to us. And, uh, we'll probably run the planter right behind that cultivator this year. In that field, just so we can make sure we get it done. But I guess, well, yeah. Cause I guess it... Yeah, because we're doing bean... Er, no, we're doing corn. I already said corn, didn't I? So maybe we won't, but... Definitely have to make sure we're getting that uh, cultivated in. It's just another job, fortunately, to add to the spring. Big spring is a big, uh, big time of the year. Stressful, It'd be very stressful. There's just a lot of moving parts. A very narrow window. It feels like too to get everything done. So I'm kind of like tempted to start looking into like a one pass, you know, tillage type thing. Um, just for any of you that you know, the cultivator or the plow is in the ground still. It's just simulating like, you know, you half, you're, you lift it up slightly so it still covers your tracks. That's usually what you do. 
with cultivating equipment. You like to cover up your tracks so you don't have that compaction. Breaking up the compaction through the tires so I just don't lift it up. And it just simulate like you just you lifting it up slightly, leaving it in the ground still. So just so you know, for any of you new people here, that's what we do. Um, now that I've distracted myself, I don't even remember what we were saying. Yeah, one pass machines. I think that or tillage implements that would be pretty nice. Just one pass it in the fall and hopefully be able to have good enough ground or it do a good enough job to where you don't have to cultivate in the spring. That would be pretty nice. Also wouldn't be terrible to maybe just start disking our stalks as well, but I don't know. All sorts of decisions with farming. How to improve the efficiency of your operation. But we will continue on. I'll get down to that field. We'll catch you guys down there at some point. Yeah. Shouldn't be too long until we get that job done. Alrighty, so we are dropping in. We're close to our last pass. Miss a slow piece though, so we have to make sure we pick that up quick. We got the little island dug dug out here that had the trees in it. Finally. I don't know why I ever thought that was a good idea, but you know. You know. It is just I don't know. Sometimes when I try and implement like things of realism, it just ends up being a pain in the butt. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is going to be a nice big old field. I mean, not that this one wasn't big enough already. It's going to be we can't call it our biggest field anymore though, cuz the new field is definitely by far the biggest field. Which is pretty crazy gonna take some time to get through that one that's for sure but it should be fun should be fun having a big old field like that definitely starting to get to the point where it's gonna be relatively time consuming to start doing stuff especially this next year I think with the equipment that we have and now the acreage that we have it's gonna be Pretty time consuming to get uh, the jobs done. Which is alright. I think, I think if we can get that big field in corn this year, that is going to be a huge moneymaker. So then come next year, so year, uh, what, five? We should be able to really, really upgrade our equipment. Maybe move on to like a 12 row head. I'm, yeah. I was very tempted to go with a 16 row planter. But. I don't know. I thought we got through planting really quick last year with a 12 row. So I don't really feel like it was necessarily needed yet. I think probably we'll end up taking a jump to a 24 row, if anything, in the next few years. And we're definitely going to need to upgrade our um, cedar as well, our drill. I think that's very much needed. Not anything like huge, but... Like, we definitely don't need, like, an air drill or anything. But I do have one in mind that uh, my buddy, good buddy, A.W. Farmer, Evan, sent. Kind of like a slightly bigger version of the drill that we have. So it's just a FS-19 convert. But So there we go. We, we've done it. That field is finito. 
And that is all the plowing that needs to be done this year. Or not this year, but this fall or spring. Got all my words all mixed up. So we'll head back to the farm. Uh, Bobby is making a dent on that field just to our east. And we'll hook up the cultivator, likely, to this puppy. But we're not going to do any cultivating today. We're going to hop in the old 81. 10 and run the old and run that new disc vine of ours get some grass cut in that big field uh, see where that takes us so we're out here on the right side of this new field getting her mowed down dropping a narrow swath getting her done getting her done and it feels good, honestly, running disc vine again. It's not, I don't know, it's been so long since we've ran a disc vine. I think it's been since Ashton, just like over, I think it's almost a year ago. <clears throat> or over a year ago. But, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, it just goes, it's just so much quicker. Because that, I don't know, I guess that smaller New Holland we ran was like, an, we could run that at like 9. But that uh, center pivot, uh, one from JCL that he just released, you only can go like 7 mile an hour. So we're doubling our work speed. I don't know about the width, I feel like the width is pretty similar. This might be slightly less, but I don't know. Just feels good. This setup feels really nice. I don't know if we'll ever have to put the duels back on the on this tractor either. I don't know why we would need to. Is I mean, really, the main reason why we had the duels back on was to run the grain cart but we don't need that anymore so this might be a, a duelish tractor from now on this thing that it's kind of fun to see the evolution of this tractor how we've gone from like the main workhorse you know doing everything uh Kind of the jobs it does now. We're going to be mowing hay with it, baling. Kind of the chore and tractor almost now. It's kind of crazy. We'll still be spraying with it because it has the uh, Trimble uh, sprayer control and stuff on it. So I think we'll still be spraying with it. But other than that, I mean, it's pretty much just a chore and tractor. Running wagons. Joring. Oh. Huh. It's kind of interesting. I'm sure we'll have this tractor up until 100, 100 hours. This thing is going to be on our farm likely till the end of the series because I just love this tractor. Easily, easily, far and above my favorite tractor that has been made for FS22. So massive props to Dairy Deer. Just does some excellent work on his mods. The uh, the bison that he uh, did overhauled, man, that was that's one of my favorite trucks. <laughs> so huge fan of Dairy Deer's work. Him and all that group, all those guys, Pirate Iron, Rooster, Squatch, H, BCL, you know that group, those modders. They do some excellent work for us American farmers, virtual American farmers. We appreciate all you do. Farmsim would not be what it is without the modders. So honestly, first and foremost, it's the modders that we need to thank for what Farmsim is, really. They make it the game that it is. They make it fun. you to everyone that mods out there my guy pleasant view he's doing some excellent stuff too behind the scenes 
So, now that that's out of the way, I don't know. Just had to get on that, you know? Just had to get on a little ramble about that. So, yeah, it's going good. Enjoying this. Just sit down and do a little hanging for a bit before the live stream today. And this is the second recording, or I guess probably the third or fourth recording of this video, but this is actually a Tuesday and I'm going to be streaming live on Richlands. So that'll be fun. I'll probably cut out to a point where I deem good to cut to and then We'll talk to you guys here in just a second. Well, we're getting here. She's working. Got a few passes done here. Four on her fifth. But she's going good. Having fun still. Complaints. It's going to be kind of sad to actually... uh mow up this field i kind of like want to keep this field or this part of the field in pasture not gonna lie to you i'm very tempted to do so <sighs> let me know what you think in the comments i know i'm asking you guys a lot of feedback but i think we should keep this field in the in pasture this part on this side of the tree line and then just uh Use the rest for arable. Then we'd have this field and this field. Especially if we're gonna if we're planning on putting the uh grass there back into a pasture. I feel like we might need to keep this for some grass for the cows. Because we are we are expanding. I'm actually now that we're thinking about now that we're kinda talking about it. See, this is a good thing about you guys. You know, you kind of just let me vent to you. you. Let me really think out loud with you guys. Helps me to... Helps me to make my decisions a bit better. I think I think we might have to keep this side in, in grass. I really do. Yeah. Because we can't be mowing that if we're going to put the steers out front of the house there. Thinking... I'm thinking we're on to something now. I really am. I think we're on to something. So. Yeah. Anyway. I think. So yeah. That's going to be the end of the video. And we're going to call her right there. If you are still here. Hit the like button. It, would, it greatly helps, helps out the channel. If you are enjoying the content. Please consider subscribing. Always love to see new members. Or new uh faces uh, that subscribe thank you to the youtube channel members you guys are insane 193 at the moment just incredible i hope everybody's enjoying their membership enjoying the early access to the videos hoping to get this one out i know i'm not 100 percent on getting those videos out early i know last sunday we were we struggled <laughs> but I try. I try my best to get them out to you guys. This one should be out early to you YouTube channel members. So thank you guys so much for just supporting in that way. It's really awesome. Can't say thank you enough. So um, yeah, that's going to be it. So I thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. We will catch you in the next one.